Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for September 15th, 2023. Glad that you are with me. Today is Butterscotch Cinnamon Pie Day, which sounds fantastic. Costa Rica Independence Day, El Salvador Independence Day, and Guatemala Independence Day. Felt Hat Day and Greenpeace Day. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Our reading for today is Exodus chapter 23, verses 14 through 19. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Three times in the year you shall hold a festival for me. You shall observe the festival of unleavened bread, as I commanded you. You shall eat unleavened bread for seven days at the appointed time in the month of Abib, for in it you came out of Egypt. No one shall appear before me empty-handed. You shall observe the festival of harvest, of the first fruits of your labor, of what you sow in the field. You shall observe the festival of ingathering at the end of the year when you gather in from the field the fruit of your labor. Three times in the year all your males shall appear before the Lord Adonai. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with anything leavened, or let the fat of my festival remain until the morning. The choicest of the first fruits of your ground you shall bring into the house of Adonai your God. You shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, um, we have now uh, the a declaration of three sort of high holy days. The first one we've heard about already. It's the festival of unleavened bread. Um, it is a seven-day festival that might sound familiar. We just, just, just talked about Sabbath. A uh, Sabbath day every seven days and a Sabbath year every seven years. Now we hear about a seven day period here at the beginning of the year. Um, and it is a celebration of the, the liberation from Egypt. Um, then we also have the festival of harvests and the festival of ingathering. Um, those, those are two sort of separate ones that are pretty close together. If I'm not mistaken, I think there are some other names, but I believe these are both in the seventh month of the year. So again, seven is pretty important. These are the three main festivals. And so the idea is every male is going to gather into God's presence these three times a year. Um, so, you know, the idea of a creaster is not a new one. If you don't know, that's someone who shows up on Christmas and Easter. Are the Christians sort of two high holy days. Um, this is sort of the idea. If you don't go any other time, come during the festival of, of Unleavened Bread, the um, festival of ingathering, and the festival of harvest. I got those mixed up. But um, these are the three that you're going to come into God's presence. There's going to be assemblies. There's going to be a celebration. Now, of course, there are a bunch of other holidays that will be eventually sort of celebrated and, and reflected. Um, but these are the three, the main three ones. And you notice it's around an agrarian lifestyle. Um, there's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Sure, that makes sense. That's Passover. Um, though it, it does have uh, some, it's in the spring, so it's similar to sort of like new life and that sort of stuff. 
And then you have these fall festivals where there's harvest, bringing everything uh, or, or cutting down everything, right? And, and processing it. And then in gathering where you bring all this stuff and you store it, you put it, you bring it to the, the city of refuge so that other people can eat from it. You, you do all that sort of thing. And it is both are both of these are very much about abundance. They're about God has provided for us for the winter that is to come. Um, that, that's part of it as well. So these are the three times that people are to gather, specifically the men, um, in God's presence. This sets a pattern, a way of being. It is formational. That's why we have holidays, is because it tells us something. When we gather and celebrate the incarnation at Christmas, when we gather and celebrate the resurrection on Easter, it tells us something about who we are and whose we are. In the same way, the Jewish people gathering to um, remember God's miraculous and liberative act in the Exodus at Passover, to celebrate God's abundance in harvest and in gathering, tells them something about who God is and whose they are. Um, it tells them something about who they are, about their, how they're well taken care of. Then we have a couple of other sort of, um, I don't know, ge uh, general sort of rules, um, things to, to say, don't come before God empty handed. So you gather at the harvest, bring something, right? Maybe you haven't, maybe the, the harvest wasn't as good as you were expecting. The temptation might be to not bring everything, right? Instead of bringing 10%, you bring nothing because you need all of it. The fact that you cannot come empty-handed um, means that you that's an act of faith. That you're willing to say, I'm going to give this part of what I have harvested to make sure that it is it can be used. And what is it used for? It's, it's to provide for the priests. It's to provide for those who are hungry, who are widows and orphans whose fields haven't produced much and they need, just need something. Um, so that's, that's an interesting bit. Uh, there's also not offering blood, sac blood of my sacrifice with anything leavened. So the separation of uh, leavened and, and sacrificial sort of things. This is very important in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, but as we will see with the tabernacle, um, unleavened bread is supposed to be the bread of the presence, not leavened. Um, also, don't let the fat of the festival remain until morning. Eat everything, right? It's abundance. Uh, the choice is the first fruits of your ground you shall bring into the house of, of Adonai, your God. Same sort of idea. Don't, don't bring your offering at the tail end when you know that you can cover everything else, right? Um, and you've stored up enough savings and all that sort of stuff. The idea is you, you give out of the abundance. You give from your first fruits. And then there's this, you shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk. I believe this comes up a couple of other times in, in the... Um, law, but just something to note. This is where our Jewish siblings get the idea of specifically that you can't eat meat and dairy products at the same time. In fact, Orthodox Jewish folks go so far as to have two separate dishes and pots and pans and sections of their kitchen so that those things don't mix at all in any way. That is the interpretation of um, not boiling a kid in its mother's milk. Now, interestingly enough, uh, there has been some evidence uncovered uh, through archaeological um, sort of uh, archaeological work on cultic sites as well as writings from the Canaanite area that suggest that this idea of boiling a kid in its mother's milk was a direct cultic practice, a way of worshiping one of the local gods. Um, and so there is a suggestion that the point of this is not about dairy and meat products. It's about don't worship Baal, this particular Baal, in that way. Don't, even if it seems like everybody else is doing this, 
don't participate in that type of religious practice. So what does this all mean for you, the gathering for High Holy Days? What does it mean to gather for our High Holy Days? What does it mean to celebrate and to pass on traditions, to experience afresh every year God's inbreaking, God's redemptive act? What does it mean to be formed by the seasons of spring and fall, of harvest, planting? To give out of our abundance rather than whatever is left over. How low are these form formational for these people and for us? Take some time to reflect in prayer, in meditation, in journaling. And when you're ready, we'll join our hearts together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. We give you our praise and thanks, O God, for all gifts of love we have received from you and for your persistent mercy in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for the grace and peace of Jesus Christ. all creatures with whom we share the earth. Those whom we have loved and who have loved us. Support and encouragement from others. Food and drink to share in your name. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for God's abundance, for harvest, for bringing in, for the celebration of grace, and the giving of God's very being. We give you our cares and concerns, O God, because we know you are kind and care for your children in every circumstance. Especially we pray for Lutheran and Reformed churches. People who live in poverty. Those who are sick or suffering. Those who work for their healing. Comfort and peace for those who are dying. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Linda Lapie, who was moved to Ashna Rehab Center, for an online request from Viola and her friend Cordelia for physical and emotional health, for Jennifer, a friend of Ashley's, for Donna, a friend of Ashley with stage four breast cancer, for Scotty, my niece, for Tom, Bill's childhood friend. For Ashley, who is recovering from shingles. For Hank and Charlotte, Sandy's sister-in-law. 
undergoing chemo. The family and friends of George, a friend of Sandy, who suddenly died. For the Mayfields, and continued good news. For Laura, a sister of Cameron, who is recovering from a leg amputation. To you, O God, we give up the burdens of this day, trusting your love and mercy. To you, O God, we surrender ourselves, trusting our risen Lord to lead us always in the way of peace. Today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us cast our anxiety on the Lord who cares for us. The God of all grace will restore, strengthen, and support us. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button. Go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org for more information. Find us on Facebook and Instagram. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA. Our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible with my own little tweets. You can watch this daily prayer on YouTube. You can listen to it on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. And you can sign up for a daily email on Substack. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.